If you've got a food crazy dog, but you struggle to train your dog. In this video, I'm gonna cover the biggest mistakes people make when training your dog with treats. Not only that, but how you can transform your food rewards into a food play experience. So if you're ready for this one, let's dive in. One of my dogs in particular ranks food rewards way above any kind of toy play. Now I made the mistake in the early days of insisting that she played in a particular way, but I soon realized when I watched back on video that she really wasn't enjoying it 100%. So I went back to the drawing board, I had a rethink, and I realized that the real key and the real secret was not to try and have my dog that loved food rewards enjoy something else more, some sort of toy play, what I really needed to do was develop a way that I could make these food rewards just as exciting as any toy play. And that changed everything. So if you've got a dog that loves food rewards, please don't shy away from it, absolutely embrace it. But you might be struggling with certain elements of how to get the best out of food play and avoid these biggest mistakes. So the first biggest mistake, and this is one of the mistakes I made in the early days, is that I had always looked at food rewards as a stepping stone to higher, more exciting levels of reward with toys. When in fact, what I was missing and the biggest mistake I had made was I hadn't developed food play to a level that was comparable to anything as exciting as I could do with toys with my other dogs. So if your dog really loves food as rewards, but doesn't really enjoy toy play the same way, of playing with a tug or playing fetch or all these things, you still, the dog loves food more than those things, then embrace food play rather than putting pressure on yourself for your dog to love something that they really don't love. The next biggest mistake is that food rewards are more of a transaction, a sort of payment that we make a dog where I give you the bit of food, you do the thing, I give you a bit of food, you do the thing, I give you a bit of food. And it's sort of dull and it's boring. What you want to do to build an amazing connection, and you can totally do this through food play, and that is make your reward an experience. Interactive play is the number one way to build a great connection with your dog. And you can do that through food play, 100%. But you do have to learn how to make it an interactive, engaging experience. Make it more of an event for your dog. And when you learn the skills to do that, you can start to have food play as an interactive experience for you and your dog and really boost your connection. The next biggest mistake is that food rewards and the way we deliver them is a little bit boring. It's a bit dull. We feel like this is just something we have to do rather than something we love to do. Perhaps you only ever deliver food rewards in one particular way when in fact you can really jazz things up. You might at the moment just deliver food from your hand, but think about it. You can do so many other things. You can flick it in the air for them to catch. You can roll it along the floor. They can follow food in your hand. You can start to move about. You can put more energy into it. You can then incorporate food orientated toys and they can retrieve it to you. So I would encourage you to find lots of different ways, fun ways, you can deliver food rather than that, just that one boring delivering of food from your hand. So the next biggest mistake, and often the reason our dogs lose interest, is that we just keep the delivery at one energy level. That kind of low level, not very exciting. Good girl, good, clever kind of level. I encourage you to think about rewards with a full spectrum of color. Colors go from the coolest of shades to the hottest of shades. Think of your rewards in that way and think of food rewards in that way. So you can have the cool end of the color spectrum and have things calm and chilled and lower in energy. And you can take it right up to the hot end of things where it's high energy, lots of movement and everything in between. So you can really mix up the energy level of the way you deliver food rewards. The next biggest mistakes is that food rewards are way too big and our dog stands there chewing and chewing and crunching and crunching and it takes a little while for our dog to actually consume the food reward that we've just delivered to them. We lose the momentum in what we're doing. My top tip is to use something small that's tasty 
that agrees with our dogs and our dogs really do love that they can consume really easy. So go for a softer treat and go for a small treat. It, as long as it's tasty and our dog does really love it, that means you can keep the momentum and the flow in the way that you play with your food rewards. And the next biggest mistake to avoid is getting your hands and your fingers bitten. Quite often, if you hold a food between your fingers, our dogs really can't see where it is and they really are guessing. So they're, they're kind of guessing and they can tend to nip and bite at your fingers and it's sore, it's sore, I've had it. <laughs> Whereas if you can learn how to hold food in your hand, what I do is lie it on the flat of my hand and pin it to my hand with my thumb. Once my dog knows how to locate that and they know that it's always in that same position, they go and locate the food with real confidence. As soon as they locate it in the right position, we can move our thumb from the food and they can consume it easily and with confidence. Once you can master that little skill on its own, your dog starts to build a huge amount of confidence. And so do you, because now you can deliver food in a way where you don't get your fingers bitten and it doesn't damage the relationship between you and your dog. Learn how to deliver food in a way that builds confidence for both you and your dog. And the next biggest mistake is that we use special treats that are different to our food. Yes, tasty treats are important. It's much more about the reward event and what we do with the food rewards. So if you can really up your food play experience for your foodie dog, you can use the normal daily food, in which case you can take it out of the daily food amount and you're not giving them anything that's really overly different to what they normally eat anyway. It may well be that your dog is really not finding the food play experience all that reinforcing at all. So don't put pressure on your dog to love food because you think they must love food rewards because every dog loves food rewards not every dog does not every dog finds it all that reinforcing especially when it comes to dog training so don't put pressure on them to love it if they really don't and with a really nervous more anxious less confident dog take things really slowly and really gently whatever the style of interactive play as you're finding out what your dog really does love. So there you have it. You can now avoid the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to training our dogs with food rewards. If you'd love to learn how to get the very best out of your food play experience, then I have got a food play masterclass. There's a link to the masterclass in the description below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell so that you get notified every time a new video is released. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.